All right. We're good now. We're good? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I sweet. promise. We're good this time. Are you sure we're good? Yep. <laughs> then the old double record gets you every time, buddy. Well, everyone, uh, like you've seen in the intro and stuff, this is one that I'm super excited about. I kind of mentioned it earlier before we started recording that this will be similar to kind of like what we do with the high state guys, you know. So we were fortunate enough to talk to those guys about football and their career and then kind of how they've transitioned into just being outdoors like you and I. And, and that is certainly no different, except – that actually races on two wheels and doesn't just run or play mm-hmm. football. So some, some motocross people don't necessarily like sports. Some people like myself like it all. And so this will be super fun to talk to you. So first of all, man, thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us today. I'm excited to have you on. Um, like I told you, I'm, I'm getting my son into this as well. And I've been kind of getting into it as well. And it's a, it's an awesome sport to follow. And, um, we're super stoked to have you on today, man. So yeah, and I don't know anything about it, so it'll yeah. be cool to learn. Yeah, and you're going to learn a lot because, <laughs> yeah. there, um, and we'll get into it. But there's obviously different disciplines in terms of motocross racing, and so uh, we're going. We'll uh, you'll you'll be getting the crash course today, yep. man, just like I did. Um, and I can't go too far without shouting out my buddy Jordan for hooking this up. Uh, he's the one that kind of introduced me to you and who you are and what you do, and and then I started seeing the hunting side of things and the motocross, yep. and we kind of built a relationship there on Instagram and stuff, and so. Shout out to him. I, I, I got to mention, he's still waiting for that Husqvarna mat. So whenever you want to send that up, I'll give you my I address. Got one rolled up. I got I'll, one rolled up. I'll give you my address for it, and he can put that in his garage. See, see there you go, buddy. I asked him. I asked him for you. But <laughs> that man, uh, again, thanks for coming on. Let's go ahead and introduce yep. yourself and uh, just talk, talk about what got you started in the racing and, and kind of what it is that you're doing. Yeah, you know, my name's Thad Duvall. Uh, luckily enough, I'm. I've made a career out of racing uh, dirt bikes in the woods, so it's it's uh, it's cool. Um, you know, I started riding when I was, I think, two and a half, and just kind of uh, went from there. And one of the lucky ones that made a career out of it and get paid to do uh, what I love to do. And uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, it's been a wild uh, career. You know, I've had a few injuries, um, big injuries. Last year, I shattered my hip and. Uh, pretty much have a whole new hip in me and um yeah you know it's it's a crazy sport <clears throat> you know i have a four-year-old son now he's full bore in the dirt bikes so i kind of get um some karma for my parents scaring them <laughs> so i know how they feel now so no joke. um yeah but no this is uh it's it's a crazy sport you know it's um you know we're very family oriented um you know i have an amazing wife she supports me 100 percent and you know, there's been days where you know, I, I couldn't walk for a month and she had to pretty much do everything. So, yeah, um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's been a wild few years with some injuries, but um, luckily enough, I'm still racing. I still love to do it. And uh, yeah, man, it's it's crazy. You know, I, we it's busy, busy life. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, I'm a full time racer and semi full time hunter half the time. <laughs> but, uh, Aren't we all? It's enjoyable. So. You know, we travel a lot. You know, we yep. we live in Florida from the beginning of January till the middle of March, and then from the middle of March, we're in North Carolina till the end of April, and then we're home for a few months, and then back on the road every weekend racing. So, um, yeah, wouldn't change it for the world, man. I really enjoy it. You know, I get to see some amazing stuff with my wife and my kid, and get to enjoy it. You know, we always say uh, a family that races together stays together. So, um, really cool atmosphere. I really enjoy it, and yeah, man, get to race dirt bikes when I'm not in a cast. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we'll get into that. On things, but um, yeah, man, just super enjoyable. Very thankful that dirt bikes have uh, led me to some amazing places. You know, I've been to Japan, Italy, um, South America, Germany, Mexico, all around the world, and yeah. you know, still some of my favorite places to be is right here at home. So, um, yeah, dirt bikes are rad, and I really enjoy them. They are rad, man. I, <laughs> it was funny, you know, I, like I said, my son is, um, he's getting ready to turn four. Uh, when this releases, it'll be it, his, his birthday will be like that weekend. So, um, he's getting ready to turn four. We got him started on a CRF 50 with training wheels. Uh, we've crashed it a couple times. We had some, uh, some, uh, corner track issues yeah. there some muddy corner track issues and getting his foot caught up in the rear brake and stuff and so it's uh it's already taking a toll on me mentally but i know that he loves it and um i really enjoy watching it it's just so funny like you know we talk to some of the baddest dudes when it comes to football and stuff dude 
I love you, Jake Ballard. You're the, you're a huge man, but the motocross and GNCC racers and just that, that's a different breed of animal dude, for sure. Because these guys, it, it's a sport. It's a sport, dude. You see them getting off the bike and they're completely and, and just torn down and, uh, you have to be in good shape, which we'll talk about some more, but yeah, man, it's, uh, it's wild. What does, uh, what's GNCC? What's that? Well, yeah. So we'll get into that. So let's go ahead. We'll get started. I want to get started with how he, like where he got his start, but we're going to get into GNCC. It's grand national cross country, correct? Yep. All right. So it's, it's cool. basically instead of racing and we'll dive into it some more, but instead of racing on like your typical super cross track or just a motocross track that you see on TV, like the chase sex and videos I've showed you and stuff that he's racing, like through the woods, through some mud, uh, some nasty okay. terrain, like okay. it's some nasty shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. uh, but let's go ahead before we get into GNCC. I want to talk about like, you, you mentioned that you started riding at two and a half, three, like yep. take us through your transition and kind of how you got to where you were today. Cause I think that's going to be a really cool story. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I started, started riding when I was in two, two and a half, and um, actually at three, uh, it's funny, I had a huge crash on a PW50, and um, I guess I didn't want nothing to do with dirt bikes, and just so happened we had a, a mini quad that my, well, I should start, <clears throat> my dad raced professional quads for 12 years okay. at the GNCC series, so um I was kind of destined to be a quad guy, I guess, from a lot of people. So um, I started on a, I started on a PW50 and then had a big crash. And actually, I started riding a quad and rode it for quite a while until I was probably six. Um, so I, I think everybody was like, oh, he's going to be a quad rider, quad rider. But then um, I guess just one day I came to my dad and was like, hey, like I, I want a dirt bike. And, you know, with quads, they're pretty expensive. You have double of everything. So he jumped on it and got me a dirt bike and it just kind of took off from there you know it's um uh you know at from seven i started racing the gnc season on seven um actually signed my first team contract when i was 11 years old with yamaha so um i was like the youngest um youngest i guess gncc there at the time to have that contract and you know i was with yamaha all the way from 11 years old till geez i think maybe 20 so we had some good i've won many championships um won the xc2 pro lights championship in the gncc's which is your step down from your xc1 class that i'm in now um uh then you know we i went to honda in 2012 i rode for factory honda 2012 13 14 uh had some really good rides um Kind of was 12 and 13 and 14 was kind of bumpy years for me. I was kind of a, a private tier doing my own thing, but for a factory team, I was Honda's factory rider at the time. And it was tough, man. It was a struggle. You know, you don't know how much work goes into having to order parts or finding a salary to make money or yep. calling sponsors to be yep. like, hey, like, do you want to sponsor me? Um, you know, this is. Luckily enough, I had built a, a big enough name for myself where yeah. when I did call these sponsors, they're like, oh, yeah, like maybe we can work something out. So, you know, those were some pretty rough years. And I think maybe I want to say they kind of lit that fire back in me, I guess I, yeah. I should say. Um, yeah, they earn it. And then, yeah, for sure. And then, you know, I had some really good rides in 2014. And then I went to um, – Argentina for the ISD six days international race and um, took a, a bone stock Honda 450 and finished ninth overall out of the best riders in the world. So I think I opened up some eyes and then I actually got home and had some phone calls from uh, Fred Andrews at the KR4 uh, arrive and ride team at that time in 2015. And, um, you know, they were riding Husqvarna's and you know, I jumped on that, you know, it was like, oh, maybe this is a door, a, an opening for me to kind of get my foot in the door with a factory team, with a Rockstar team. So, um, you know, 15 was really good. And then 16, I had a, a really good year. Um, that's when the factory Rockstar Husqvarna team actually called and, um, yeah, picked me up. And I started uh, for the factory Husqvarna team in 2017. And, uh, yeah, it was a crazy few years, you know, me, obviously I'm sure a lot of people that's going to listen to this news, Caleb Russell is. So 
um yeah just man we battled for years and you know um yeah it was a, it was a really good run just a few injuries i it's it's crazy because you know i i raced professionally for so many years and it was like i never i had broken bones but i never had surgery but then in 2020 or at the end of 2019 i blew my knee completely apart yeah. um end up having to get surgery on it so i missed half of 20 came back at the end of 20 had some podiums some really good rides um started actually training with caleb um in 21 and was feeling really good i felt like you know i had a really good shot at the championship and then um just a freak thing i shattered my shoulder on my collar going so missed a lot of 2021 um came back at the end of 21 and had some really good rides again um back you know started training for 2022 feeling really good on the bike strong first race just hit a stump wrong and shattered my hip like it just it's been a really it like 2020 started a really rough couple of years and um you know i've had quite a few injuries but the hip was was pretty gnarly you know i couldn't walk for almost three months and um yeah just i really i in last year when i broke my hip i was kind of like man like I, I think i'm ready to be done i don't know if i really want to do this but um you know i had some really good people behind me and they wouldn't let me quit so um grinded all summer long and came back and i think i podiumed like uh three out of the four last races and um actually um, battled for the win in a couple ones so it was almost like a sigh of relief for me to be like oh man like maybe i still got this and then you know beginning of this year i've been really good um yeah had some really good rides the, the sprint enduros and then had some good rides going into gnccs and then um just had a weird practice crash and broke my scaphoid in my wrist um it's like one of the worst bones to break for um I guess the professional racer, uh, it's like the one of the slowest healing bones in your body. So I think a lot of football players have the same yeah. injury a lot. Um, it's just, uh, not a very good bone to break. And the way I, I had broke it, we thought it maybe would heal, um, on its own. And, uh, yeah, it's has been that case. So yeah, got a cast on now for the next couple of weeks, trying to figure some stuff out and yeah, man, it's, uh, it's been a long career, but you know, I've had some setbacks, but, and I just, I've never gave up and I, yeah. I've never had that mentality of never giving up. So, um, just keep bouncing back and keep grinding. It's, it's yeah. what I love to do. So, so I, when, I, when he's, uh, when he, <laughs> I want to echo. So when he's shouting out his wife and he really does mean it because that's a <laughs> lot of, that's a lot of, uh, turmoil, if you will, yeah. for, for one person to have to deal with for sure. So, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I was stuck in a recliner last year for almost three months, so I couldn't walk, couldn't hardly do anything. And then she's taking care of me, also raising the yeah. wild and crazy three-year-old. So oh, yeah. it keeps her pretty busy. I know. Yeah, sure. and those injuries yeah. definitely don't help when you're starting to, like you said, with your child, you're starting to think about, like, yeah. man, like, am I sure he doesn't want to play soccer? <laughs> like, like yeah. are we sure? <laughs> like, I just assume him do anything <clears throat> other than dirt bikes at this point, right. but it's just – he's diehard dirt bike so it ain't gonna change oh for so. sure and that's something that i battle with a lot too it's like man like i know people get hurt with this like i've seen my son crash into the house like yeah. like i've seen it like am i sure i want him to do that but dude <laughs> yeah. he'll be out there for like three hours like nonstop, just oh, going around yeah. and around and, and around and around so um we kind of touched on it a little bit too but uh grand national cross country um people that may think of um Supercross and motocross and just dirt bikes in general. Um, did you ever watch the Disney movie Supercross? Or no, not Supercross. Is it, was it? It was motocross. Motor, motocross. motocross. But yeah. then there was the Channing Tatum Supercross movie, which I got me kind of oh, confused. Yeah. Did you ever watch that Disney Channel? <laughs> All right. So, a lot of people probably know who like Ricky Carmichael is, or Jeremy McGrath, or like big names like that, right? Everyone's yep. or Brian Deegan, you know, like from you know the Metal Militia stuff, but what these guys are doing is completely different. So I want to give you like, let's for someone who's not like, like a Ben, let's yep. tell the differences between just like what they see and, you know, Lucas oil stadium versus what you're doing out there at, yeah. at back a lot. Of, and uh, also to a local connection, which you might know on 33 fast tracks before you get to Nelsonville. Mm -hmm. 
that's that's the track too where we were talking about before so that's kind of an area locally where people can do this too but let's talk about the differences between those the gncc races and then like the normal disciplines if you will yeah you know like a lot of you know obviously a lot of people know what supercross and motocross is you get to see it on tv you know yep supercross is in stadiums um you get to see the whole thing motocross is um outdoors but you still get to see kind of the whole concept on yeah. camera and everything and um you know the gncc is, is is totally opposite of that you know we race all over the east coast every state pretty much you know um our race you know they have multiple races over the weekend saturdays quad races sundays bike races you know by the time we get to race on that track it that track's like 20 hours old from yeah. people racing it so the track's pretty beat you know our the GCCs are typically, you know, obviously through the trees, but it's like 11 to 13 miles of trail. So it's, you know, a lot of yeah. people don't see a lot of the racing. Um, you know, they, they are getting better. Um, they have a live feed now where they have quite a few cameras strung out through the woods. Um, you know, our race for the afternoon is, is three hours long. So, you know, we're on a bike for three hours constantly um, just getting the, Piss yeah. Me yeah. Oh, in, com um, in comparison, that's that's a that's a comparison between the other disciplines being on there for thirty minutes plus two, basically. Yeah. Or like thirty. Which it, thirty minutes. I, so. I'll give it. To, that is, you know, motocross is high demand. You know, you're say your heart rate for motocross is one eighty to one ninety to two hundred beats per minute. You know, where we are there, but not for. You know, we're kind of like uh, almost like a wave kind of yeah. trip, like yeah push at certain times and um you know they do have a lot of similarity but i do believe um they kind of fall in the same category as sure. i guess mentally toughness yeah um you know we, we are racing for three hours it is tough but uh at the end of the day man it's it's a long day especially when the track's um muddy or ruddy or you know um snow we race at snowshoe west virginia the ski resort and it's like yep. one of the toughest races of all year um you know we were racing in gnarly conditions for three hours over rocks and um yeah it's there's a lot i wish people could see for the gnccs to really i think it would open up the eyes and be like wow this sport it's really demanding but yeah um you know with us we kind of people don't get to see that i guess yeah mm -hmm. and then you start streaming it on peacock like everything else so we can watch man that'd yeah. be sweet because it's like i said that's yeah. been, it's been something that i'm super interested in it's just you see it um you kind of touched into uh, like the, the the demand, right? So mentally tough, yeah. I think, is what you heard. And I had a note here that actually feeds in perfectly for this. But you know, as a professional rider, you know, I'm always seeing you doing that road work. You're always out there, you know, making sure that you're fit. Like, what kind of physical yeah. and mental preparation goes into making sure that you can compete for a factory team? Months and months and months of preparation. I mean, it's like you know, our season is from. Um, the end of February to the end of October. So, um, you know, at the end of October, let's say you're, you're going to the next season, you maybe get a month to kind of um, do what you want, I guess. It works out for me because I get yeah. November for yeah, deer hunting. Yeah, that's fun. But, you know, it's, the you know, December rolls around and you're all, like you're already kind of getting that mindset, all right, I need to get back in the gym. I need to start doing this. And then, you know, we leave like two days after Christmas, you know, we, we celebrate Christmas and then it's like, we pack, take our Christmas stuff down. We pack, we head to Florida and then that, you know, all of January Feb and February and it's just everyday grind. I mean, we're riding, uh, I, don't, I don't even know, some weeks a lot, yeah. you know, it's, you know, Monday, you know, there's some days where we're, cycling for three hours riding for two hours and then gym you know it's it's i hate even saying it but it's like a nine to five job you know it's it's oh, all that, day yeah uh, i mean it's and, and that goes for weeks and weeks and weeks and even when race season comes around you're still every day doing something and um and it's it's a grind and then you know we go on summer break for july and then, you know, back and then August, it's like right back into that boot camp. It's so, um, and it's, there's some long days, there's some struggle days and there's days where I'm like, why, why do I still do this? Like I, I'm, 
I wouldn't say I don't enjoy it. I do enjoy the supper, but it's just sure. like something is like, man, like <laughs> I think I, I, this is a long day. Like, I, should I even be doing this? But, um, you know, then, then you get to a race and there's no question that I'm like, am I prepared for this? You know, you, we race for three hours and you have to be on your toes the whole three hours. You have to be mentally sharp. Um, if not, you know, you, we're going 30 mile an hour between trees that are three foot wide. So yeah, it's yeah. just like, and you have that one little mistake, it's Game obviously up. like, yeah. yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a, it's a shatter your collarbone, shatter your hip, yeah. break your wrist. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So Blow your knee out. And there's a lot goes into our sport. That's for sure. Which any sport, obviously, oh, yeah. but, um, yeah, it's makes for some long days. Oh, for sure. Um, so getting into kind of some more of the GNCC stuff, let's, I want to kind of get into the bike setup a little bit too, because people that are listening that are, that are gearheads and know the differences, you know, um, there's obviously some, there's some differences between like a supercross suspension to the motocross suspension, probably even more so for yeah. you guys too. I know like a larger fuel, yeah. fuel capacity is a huge issue when you're riding three hours. Are there any specific modifications to like the bike that you can talk about that would differ between the supercross race and the motocross race? Um, obviously we have uh a bigger tank mm -hmm. you know the average tank is 1.8 gallons our yeah. tanks are 3.2 so i mean there's we carry have to carry obviously extra fuel mm -hmm. um you know instead of like a supercross motocross bike they'll have 19 inch rear tires we run an 18 inch tire okay. um makes the tire an 18 inch tire has more like a taller side knob so it's more plushness in the roots and the rocks um but other than that, really, you know, for my setup, it's pretty similar to like a motocross suspension setup. I like my stuff a little stiff. Um, so there's not really much difference between that. Um, really, just the big difference is just a, a big tank and an 18-inch okay. tire. You know? So, yeah. you know, um, I'm running a motocross motor, um, motocross frame. So, um, yeah, there's not much big difference between ours. But, you know, I know a lot of guys, they'll run – um, like an enduro frame because yeah. it had, the gussets are a little different. The welds are a little different. So the frame actually flexes a little more for the roots and the rocks. So, um, it's just all preference really. But I'm, I'm the biggest thing is just like a big tank for fuel yeah. thing and racing three hours, two hours. So, um, yeah, not much difference going into like some of the bike stuff too. Obviously you race for, for Husky. Um, we didn't mention, but now you're with gas gas. Um, yep. I was kind of telling the Ben too, like, so, I, and I can't remember, I, I can't remember who owns who, but I know KTM, Gas Gas, and Husqvarna are all under the same roof. Um, you have yep. a sweet new facility that you just got to visit not too long ago. Yep. So, if we can, let's, do you think for this particular sport and given that those bikes are from the Europe scene, do you think that those bikes, is there a difference between European bikes and Japanese bikes when it comes to cross country stuff? Or do you think, just depending on like the terrain and where um, they're from or... Yeah, there. I think there's like our our frames are steel frames. Like, I guess the Austrian bikes are steel frames. The Jap bikes are mostly aluminum frames. So they have their, I guess, in certain places they have their advantages or disadvantages. Um, I don't really know. How, I've rode both, and I've never really. I couldn't tell you the difference or what one frame will do to another frame. Um, I am picky when it comes to setup. So, but other than that, I like it. I don't think one really has an advantage over the other. I just, I do know KTM, Gas Gas, and Husqvarna, they put a lot of effort into the off road scene where you kind of watch the, um, the Jap bikes kind of motocross, supercross, that kind of scene or whatever. So, um, you know, I, I do feel like, KTM, Husqvarna, and Gas Gas are kind of ahead of the game on the off-road side, I guess you should say. Um, but just because they, you know, they devote a lot of time to testing or developing um, these off-road bikes, and they have a bigger line of off-road bikes. So yeah, and that, um, I was going to parallel that to a little bit, and this is this is kind of a complete segue, not necessarily, but a little bit. But obviously, MXGP. It's kind of that all, yep. all year round, super gnarly, disgusting terrain, you know, the mountains and stuff. And I'm, I'm not sure. I may be wrong on it, but I think I've heard where like KTM, like Hurlings, obviously he's, he's one of the greatest riders of all time. Right. Yeah. And I think he, with his Red Bull contract, like he's basically getting like a bike built for each 
like track like ktm specifically right. building a bike it's not like the <laughs> same platform with some tweaks like they're really devoted into some of the just like that gnarly stuff like that I was talking about yeah i mean they have they have data from probably you see they've been at that track for 15 years they have data from every year at that track so they're like yeah. okay you know we can we can go in and it's crazy because like we can go in and change this gusset to make the frame flex more at this track yeah. where that track yeah. is super rough so they don't want the frame to be rigid like there's so much stuff yeah. that goes it's crazy like I, i'm kind of curious he's about, like he's like what is going on I like, know. I, poor ben's mind's <laughs> like i'm it's doing the the what's the mental gymnastics thing with all yeah. the equations yeah <laughs> yeah like well at the beginning when you said you're going overseas you're going to europe you're going to japan I'm just wondering what the logistics look like to move your whole setup. How many bikes do you take? Yeah. How, like, how does all that stuff work? If you were to go to Japan, do they have stuff there for you? Or are you taking your own? Or uh, That's that's um, where my head's going. Huh? On the factory yeah. side. Most of the time, um, they're building stuff here and then shipping it there. Um, you know, like, uh, for, you know, I race it, obviously a big race for us. Offer guys are the international six days enduro series so like that's when every country picks the best four riders and they they go there and represent their country and um you know luckily I, i've been picked quite a few times um so you know they'll build our bikes here and then they'll ship them there and then like we get there and we show up and then everything's ready yep. and then but in some cases you know um a lot of times we'll have to take our own suspension or things like that like in kind of <laughs> yeah like they'll have a bike there but it's kind of like we have a bike yep. you bring what you want um you know and uh, i'm sure the case of a lot of riders is first priority is a suspension for sure oh so, yeah 100 percent. um so like you said um, you like yours a little stiffer you're gonna bring your own suspension and hook it up to that bike that way you don't have to yeah. mess with it and test it out and everything yeah that way when That's i get cool. there all i do is mount that stuff up and i know the bike is remotely close to what i what i've been riding or whatever yeah. cool you know and then even like that's we you know we they build our practice bikes you know our race bikes we only touch them on the weekends at the race so you know we have practice bikes at home and you know they'll they'll spend all that money to build us two practice bikes yeah. that are identical to our race bikes so it's like when we leave our practice bikes to ride our race bikes, there isn't a, nothing different. Like it's all the same, you know, to feel comfortable on both. So a lot of, a lot of work goes into it for a sure. Of, a, yeah. lot, a lot of work and a lot of money. No, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. A yeah. massive yeah. amount of money. Like I was just talking to Jordan yesterday about, uh, this little girl, there was a video on, um, Moto playground and it was, uh, you may have seen it. It was like a girl that got qualified for the South central regional. And she yeah. was just like surprised and just, dude, she was just covered in mud. And, um, he's like, yeah, she just realized that she's got to spend like 10 grand now to get to nationals. <laughs> I was like, yeah, Jesus, it's... it's ridiculous, dude. But there's a lot of money guys into it for sure. That's just mo motorsports in general, right? Like Max down yeah. here, he loves dirt track racing. He loves NASCAR. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. pick your poison. Yeah. Any, any pro sport you're yep. going to spend a lot of money in. Now money yeah. doesn't always buy yeah. speed. It, oh yeah but yeah. at the same time but it definitely helps for sure um yeah i want to sure. get in a little bit more with the bike so has there been you know you were obviously with husky i don't know what you consider yep. like the premier brand in terms of those three i know i have my opinion but you're a sponsor so i don't want you to shoot yourself in the foot but like if there been a different like what are the main differences between like a ktm a husky gas gas are all very similar obviously yeah under the same umbrella but i know there are some certain tweaks that are different i've heard you say sometimes too like maybe the seat height or how things handle yeah. kind of how things feel has, has there been much of a transition between switching from husky for all i think what you were on a husky for like six or seven years to, yeah i was to, on to, a husky for to the gas gas, the gas this gas year gas, so. yeah to the gas gas this year. <laughs> um you know obviously all three are are a good brand sure good bikes um you know I was with Husky for quite a while and I was with them through like a couple of the new generation frames or the new generation setups. And, um, you know, the last generation was good, but it, I, I don't know. I just kind of struggled with it a little bit. And then, you know, that's when I started testing the gas gas. And, uh, actually I, I, I like the gas gas a little better. Um, you know, it's, 
there's not much big difference. Yeah. You know, the frames are the same, but when it like it has the Husqvarna has a composite carbon subframe. So, and then the gas gas has a aluminum subframe. Um, so there's a little bit more flex here and there, rigidness here and there, but um, trying to figure out how to like say it like no, properly you're without. You're kidding. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I mean, there's slight, di- yeah, there's, there's slight differences, it, I guess. So this is what I tell people. People were like, oh, you know, KTM owns Husqvarna and Gas Gas. They're all the same bike. They're not the same bike. They're yeah. all, all three are different. They all have their char- own characteristics. Um, the characteristics I like the best are with the Gas Gas. I, Perfect. I, it just suits my riding style. Um, it's just the most, I'm the most comfortable on the gas. Yeah. I feel like just, it, I mean, obviously everybody's different. You know, yeah. some people will be like, Oh, like KTM fits me or the husband runner fits me or, you know, um, all three are, are awesome bikes. They're the, the best bikes I think in the industry. Um, but just rider preference really, yeah. I think is whoever, whatever you want. Um, but I, I really enjoy riding the gas gas. It kind of suits my riding style. You know, I like the rear of the bike to be a little lower. Um, you know, it kind of sounds weird, but I actually steer more with the rear of the bike. I like to slide it a little bit. So, um, instead of having more pressure on the front tire, I like to have more pressure on the rear tire with it setting a little low. So with the gas gas, I can get that feeling, but with the husband wearing, I couldn't really get that feeling without it being super low and not having, um, I guess that plushness in the suspension. So, yeah, yeah. um, and I'll have to, I'll have to show you the video. I don't know if I've ever shared it with you, but like he's talking about, they're all under the same fact. They're all under the same roof, which they just spent a mega ton of money to build a brand new facility for you guys. What's it? Is it in California or Arizona? I can't yeah. California. California. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, he got a chance to go out. I knew that we were getting ready to have him on and he's got, everyone's broken down. It's got the KTM motocross yeah. guy. It's got the KTM offer, you know, cross country guys. And then you like, it goes, husky and then it goes into the gas gas guys and here he was he's got a sick picture of him like throwing a whip <laughs> and uh he's got his own little booth and everything it's just yeah. like it's i mean you could eat off the floor <laughs> it's ridiculous so it's like a billion it's cool. dollar project yeah wow. it's, it's insane i'll have to show you money. some of the videos i think i saw yeah. um was it racer x did uh what's yeah it? they did a video so. jason uh well i can't think of his last name why get why get yeah um yeah he was like interviewing everybody. I don't know if you, I don't think you were there that day, but like, um, yeah. Coop was there. Plessinger was there. Uh, of course in the man, bam, bam, Barsha was there on the gas, gas side. Yeah. Um, how's it been to like, kind of like bump elbows with those guys, you know, I'm sure that some of them you've looked up to for a while. <laughs> yeah. You know, obviously yeah, they're big names and stuff like that, mm-hmm. but, um, everybody's super down to earth. You know, yeah. I've known quite a few of those guys for a while. Um, you know, I've known Justin for a while, just through other relationships with people, sure. and um, obviously Aaron Plessinger. You know, I have a good relationship with him. He's and, the man. Um, he's just like you meet those guys, and you kind of hear you're like, oh, people are like, oh, yeah, he's stuck up, he's a pro rider, or yeah. he's arrogant, or whatever. But like, we're just normal people. Like, yeah, you yeah. get to know people; they they're super cool, and um, you know, I've I feel like I'm pretty good friends with most of the people. Like. Um, most of those guys like Cooper Webb and all those guys. And, um, it, it's cool to be affiliated with those guys under the same umbrella, yeah. I guess you should say out there and stuff like that and see your name next to those big names. And, um, yeah, it's, it's cool. You know, like I said, you know, I was a, that kid want back in the day. I'm like, man, I, I, I hope I can make it one day. I want to be like him or, you know, yeah. and, and to be where I am now, it, it's crazy for sure. Very thankful. That's awesome, man. That's, it just goes back to like the model you always tell me, man. They put their pants on the same way, just like anybody else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But before we get in, I want to I want to dive back into your son. So like I've told you, and then we'll get into the hunting stuff. Um, but as a dad with a soon to be four year old, um, I got him as P Dub. We're we're building it. I ended up buying a, a kind of a lemon, so I got to go back through and fix some things. But Luckily, P Dub parts aren't necessarily expensive yet. Yeah. We're getting there. I'll get. I'll turn yeah. into a full blown mini dad here before too long when I get him on the. Yeah. I tell you what, that Husky sixty or that Husky fifty and that um, that that's looking pretty sweet, especially the e bikes too, man. Those are pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, but getting into that stuff, um, obviously, <laughs> he's he's giving you the scares now. 
And, uh, you know, you're trying obviously trying to teach him proper form. You're trying to teach him the way yep. that he needs to do things. And he's a little ripper, man. Uh, shout out Jacoby because he's a little ripper. I've seen some of his videos, and it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> he's flying. Um, yeah. for, for anyone like myself uh, that, that would be listening with a young kid and then, you know, learning off of your experience with, that you had with your dad, like what would be some tips that you would give someone to, to get their kid into a GNCC sport or even motocross or, or anything for that matter? Yeah racing down at the local fair, like whatever. Uh, what are some advice or tips would you give to, to like dads or moms out there that were like getting their kid involved in motorsports? Um, let him be a kid first. Like, yeah, I, you know, that was something my parents was super good at. They never pushed me. They were like, if you want to ride, ride. Um, I know obviously when I got older, we got a little bit more serious with it. Um, but like now with him, it's just like, if he wants to ride, I'm okay with it. Like, yeah. I'm not going to push him. Like, I'm not gonna be like, Oh, let's go ride in the mud or let's go do this. Or let's go. You're starting to get serious. Let's go do moto. Like I let him be a kid first. If he wants to ride, um, we ride like it, it's cool. You know, I feel like I've seen a lot of good kids kind of get pushed away from the sport. I feel like, um, sure. from obviously from the parents, just trying to be, I've seen too many parents try to live the dream through their kids. It's, I pretty much just straightforward blunt. I mean, it's just yeah, like, no, it's 100%. Uh, yeah, it's just, I don't know, man, just, just let him be a kid first and, and have fun with it. Like I, I, I want him to have fun growing up and I don't want to burn him out. Like I, yeah. I feel like, you know, I've looked at kids or older kids and be like, man, like that kid's got what it takes takes to make it like and it's weird to even look at Jacoby and be like man I, like he might be something one day so it's just like yeah, yeah. just let him be a kid have fun just, just be a family yeah yeah, it's, yeah. it's crazy now. it's cool and you know take him to the fair races don't I feel like you know with Jacoby we he could have started racing earlier than what he did but we did some like last year we went to fast tracks and yep. did some like little races. I got him used to racing with other kids and, um, he's doing exceptionally good now. So yep. I feel like, um, yeah, just, just let him have fun and keep it fun for him. Don't, don't push him. Just, um, yeah, let him be a kid. I guess you could echo that really in anything for that matter. I mean, yeah, you sports, I mean, it's the, it's the daddy ball stuff. I mean, it's the same thing when it comes to the to motorsports, you know, it's, Again, and I think that's where I'm blessed too, because I don't have. Yeah, I played sport like the main three sports, you know, baseball, basketball, football, but I never really did motocross, and so it's always something I wanted to do, but not necessarily something I did. And so I don't have that. Oh, I want to relive those glory days of racing down here, or racing down here, or or get my kid to Loretta. Like, I I don't have that, and so yeah, it's like if he wants to ride, like, dude, I'm I'm learning just as much. Like. That was my first time at fast tracks with him, just the same. Yeah. So it's like I have no expectation, but I can totally see like in the world of Instagram and the world of social media and all this stuff, TikToks. It's like there are people out there like always put like they're so, they're showing up with the hundred thousand dollar motorhome attached to mm. an enclosed twenty foot box trailer. You got three bikes, you know. You, you got a bike for each class, you know, because you're running like yeah. three classes to get your ticket, like there's a lot of money that goes into that. And I feel like people can be like so hard on their child to like make sure that they perform. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. just at the end of the day, he's, even, he's still a seven year old or an eight year old. Like, you, yeah. you, you know what I mean? Like they're still young kids. And I feel like it's, it's not even, I wouldn't say pressure from, I guess the parents. And I, sometimes I feel like it's the pressure from the outside world for the kids, you know? Yeah. Like, Caleb's boy crew, he'll he'll have the name Russell. So it's like, oh, his dad's Caleb, so I'm sure he'll have everything handed to him. Or Jacoby be like, oh, he his yeah. last name's the ball. Like he'll have everything handed to him. Or even it goes like that in any sport. Yeah. Like you look at, it, I mean, look at like uh, LeBron Deegan. James. Like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah Hayden Deegan. Right. Like even other offside sports, it's like, you know, they're all oh, he he has a name, he'll have it. But yeah. like that's one thing I want for Jacoby. Like I want him to work for it, and. I don't want everybody to be like, oh, like, yeah, yeah, he's a good rider. He's worked for it. Like, he deserves it. Like, I feel like that's a lot of the pressure, too, for, for the kids. It's from the outside world. Oh, so, sure. Um, 
that's like just another big thing is just to keep their head straight and keep forward for sure. Hey everyone, we need to take a quick break from the conversation to let you know about some awesome events that some friends of our show are putting on this month. The first guest is Justin Ross with Archery Hike and then Tony Ruffing with the Ohio Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. Hey, it's Justin Ross. Archery Hike 2023 is right around the corner. July 7, 8, or 9, you can experience this one-of-a-kind 3D shooting experience right outside of Logan, Ohio, in the heart of Hocking Hills. Archery Hike Hocking Hills 2023 is a two-plus mile hike throughout your favorite terrain like you're in a backcountry hunt. The trail guide you'll receive at check-in will guide you to 25 trail markers. Each marker will have a life-size target in a real-life spot and stock situation. They won't all be broadside, and they won't all be 20 yards. Come and enjoy a day in the wilderness with your friends and family. Each hiking pass gets you full access all day long. Shoot the course as many times as you like. All ages at any skill level are welcome. Register online at archeryhike.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Archery Hike. See all of you soon, and remember, Archery Hike, not your typical walk in the woods. Hey gang, Tony Ruffing here with the Ohio Chapter Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. I just wanted to take a moment to invite you to join us at Covered Bridge Outfitters in County Out, Ohio, July 21st through the 23rd, as our chapter hosts Muster in the Marsh. This year we'll be joined by meat eaters Ryan Callahan and Kevin Murphy of Murphy Small Game Nation. There's camping, live music, outdoor workshops, wild game cooking, storytelling, events for the kids, and more. You're not going to want to miss this national event as we bring chapters from all over the country together to celebrate our public lands and waters and all they have to offer. For more information and tickets, follow us on our Instagram page at OhioBHA or online at backcountryhunters.org. Hope to see you there. Thanks, everyone. We hope to see you at these great events, especially Archery Hike this coming weekend. But let's go ahead now and get back into the conversation with that. I'm ready. You're ready to switch gears, man. So the whole time that we've – switching gears, that was pun intended, by the way. <laughs> the whole time – so we got we got you here on the monitor. And you don't know this, but Ben's got like the the your TD, TJD Hunt Instagram page underneath it right here. Yep. And – he just, I love how he's just sitting here talking about his boy. And then he's got his son down here holding like a four pound bass, 20 <laughs> inch. Yeah, it's like, it's, it's as tall yeah. as him. And then right next to it, you got bow fishing. Yeah. Let's, uh, yeah. so let's put the motocross stuff aside. Um, I could talk to you an entire podcast about it, but we'll, yeah. we'll put that to the side. Maybe I'll start another one, but let's get into the hunting stuff because obviously you got some monster deer behind you. Your son's yep. holding a four pound large mouth. I know this is super a uh, super passion for you. So let's get into like hunting and where you got started and kind of starting from the scratch yeah. there on the hunting side because I think that's super awesome. Yeah, you know, obviously, um, racing dirt bikes full time. Uh, we spend a lot of time at home, so um, super blessed that you know I'm able to be outdoors almost every day. You know, it's um, it's crazy to think uh, where I have able to what I've been able to do outdoors within with deer or bow fishing. Um, you know, I obviously started at a young age and, um, luckily my dad was a big time hunter and he got me into it and just kind of made it. It's, I don't, I wouldn't even say it, like, it's, the, it's funny because I wouldn't even say it's a passion. Like it's, it's, I'm literally obsessed with, obsessed with it. Like it's, if I'm not, obviously I, I I'm gone from January to March, which is tough because by the time I get home, it's kind of like, I kind of miss the whole shed rally, thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. which kind of, kind of stinks because by the time I get home, it's pretty green or the squirrels have everything chewed up. But like, once I get home, it's less like, all right, turkey season, yep. fishing season, um, deer season, you know, we've been, I've really picked up on, um, we have some really good kayak stuff. I don't know if you ever heard of the well, up at the strip mines, obviously the yeah. AP grass. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So I really, I, I've really got into it the, the last few years going up there to fish. Um, you know, I've been able to catch some. They got some monsters monster up there. Fish up there. They got some yeah, bench chicken that's... inside. He's like, hell yeah. 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 That, now you're speaking my love language here. <laughs> last, last year I was able to catch like an eight pound, 11 ounce bass up there. Like, <sighs> uh, so I've really got into it with the kayaks and I don't know, man, it just like, 
What kayak, I just enjoy being outdoors. What kayak are you using? Not to interrupt. Um, I use a Pelican Catch 100 stand up one, yeah. so I can stand up and yeah, yeah. um, I can uh. I, I usually go with a couple people and they always get mad because I can stand up and sight like yeah, sight bed fish, fish the, yeah. Bed, yeah, bed fish them. So they're always like, well, you can stand up. But <laughs> no, man, it's just, um, yeah, I just enjoy being outdoors. And most of the time I'm, I'm, I'm able to get exercise, obviously, from, you know, I do get the shed on a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So I, I use it at exercise or, you know, I have a, a e-bike. So um, <clears throat> I ride it a lot, checking cameras and stuff. So I'm kind of getting two birds with one stone. So. Um, yeah, man, it's just, uh, it's definitely an obsession of mine and I'm super thankful that, um, I live in West Virginia, but I'm right on the Ohio border. Yep. So, um, I'm able to, you know, go to Ohio and chase some of the, some of the biggest deer on, in the, in the Midwest. So, oh, for sure. um, and you know, it's, I have about 2,300 acres. I can, um, hunt in Ohio with a couple of different farms and some families that, um obviously that i've met through racing so i'm pretty fortunate enough for that so yeah uh yeah man it's it's uh i, I love it i almost i almost love it more than racing honestly and it's you know it's a lot better for your racing body is, yeah <laughs> racing is coming to an end yeah obviously in the next few years so it's kind of i have some ideas that i want to do on the outdoor scene so um yeah really looking forward to obviously having a, that obsession the rest of my life awesome that's a, yeah i'm glad we talked about pelican is that one that we carry mm -hmm. is it a pelican so yeah. we carry um hobie old town and then the pelican mm. so we get yep. we're, we're just dipping our toes in the the kayak waters now here at the store yeah. so i know you've been looking at quite a bit of them too i know brian does a lot of stand-up bed fishing as well yeah we've had pelican for a couple of years and then we just picked up hobie in uh, old town just this last yeah. this last season before the season started. That's been a game changer. Yep. I spent a lot well, it's, of time. It's funny because I think a lot of people are picking up on the kayak fishing. And, yeah. You know, I, I think I <clears throat> I picked my kayak up, or I kind of got into the kayak fishing, and then um, I was like, man, I, I just had like a sit-down cheap kayak. I was like, man, I need to really like find a good kayak if I want to do this. So I just happened to like – I think I went to Royal King or something yeah. like that, and they had this Pelican catch, and it was like on sale for like three thirty nine. It was like stand up, you can stand up. I'm like, oh, I don't know if you'd be able to stand up. And it actually, I was like, oh, I'm gonna buy it. And I bought it, and I cannot, I cannot believe how like stable the yeah. kayak mm -hmm. is. Like it's, it's awesome, and it's crazy because now the kayak's like, if you see the kayak, it's like nine hundred dollars. And I was like, man, I got lucky. You got lucky. <laughs> yeah. Or <laughs> yeah. well, you get into the so, Hobie, Hobie game, you're looking at like three thirty five, yeah. four. Uh, the top of the line Hobie is like five grand with nothing on it. Yeah. And then you start yeah. throwing in ten thousand dollars worth yeah. of sonar and so yeah, people go crazy with them. You don't know how, you don't know how out of shape you really are until you have to drag a kayak like Bro. a mile through the grass that's up to your chest. Like that is a workout right there. Oh, for, for sure. sure. So, <laughs> you just did some video a, some videos on them too. We got like you wouldn't be able to move those hobies without a cart. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. they're the like the hobies so big and it weighs so much. If you had any kind of tackle in it, you'd need that little cart that they come you can buy yeah. the cart extra and, you know. They make them for pelicans too. Yeah, it's yeah. just a, like a fold up yeah. deal, and yeah. Yeah. My my it's only my only version of ki kayaking is just I have that little pelican ten footer, and uh, yeah. it's just a sit in. But I I would never. I mean, you could fish out of it, I suppose, but I don't really. If you're going to AEP a lot, yeah. you ought to check out a belly boat. Have you ever messed yeah, with those? Yeah, I heard those. I heard those are pretty good. Mm -hmm. It's like a little. Float. That'd be some. Remind it's a me. tube that you sit in. Okay, yeah. And yeah. you get flippers, you like know, a like pole, scuba like a, diving like flippers. A pool, like a pool tube? Like a, no. no. It's it's like um, it's almost like a it's horseshoe. Like a on. Yeah, 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 you sit on it. It's shaped like a horseshoe. Okay. Um, But you could pack it in, and you just get a little pump. Air and, pump, pump. Yeah. Them. I yeah. That's uh, Tarek. Tarek was met, and those are the guys that mm -hmm. go down there. For, I Tarek spent, does it too. Does he? Okay, yeah. I, I spent a lot of time this year turkey hunting, and I, I kind of dedicated myself to hunting um aep this year yeah i mean obviously there's a, a whole nother challenge to that but like i spent a lot of time doing there are some there's some really nice lakes mm -hmm. ponds lakes whatever you want to call them depending yeah. on where you are um down there and uh that strip mine stuff dude it's just it's loaded I've, I've, you hear nothing but people catching six seven plus yeah if you're willing yeah. to hike in you can catch some monsters out there for sure yeah, yeah. <clears throat> for sure 
<laughs> so <laughs> I don't know if you remember this. I I mean you remember it, but I don't know if Ben does. The uh, I told him when he was he was telling us how he was down in Florida training a lot. Did you get the turkey hunt down in Florida at all during that time? I or, didn't. No, you're, I didn't get the turkey. Yeah. I didn't get the turkey hunt any, but I did get the hog hunt. Yeah, you know where I'm going with this. I so yeah. I think it was funny because I think you were you had a day of riding. You're at you're at like the you know the, the, I don't know, the training grounds, if you will, like the practice yep. facility. You know your guys' area, and um, I was telling Ben. So he he had a whole day of training and riding and getting ready for his races, and then this guy goes out there with a damn bow and wants to freaking <laughs> hunt some wild hogs down in Florida with a bow. Yeah. I tell, let's talk about that because that was pretty wild, man. Yeah, you know. <clears throat> um, Obviously, I go to Florida and live in the, in the spring. Um, you know, I actually used to live um, with a good friend down outside of Orlando, and they had like a thousand acre lease, um, and they, it was just covered with pigs. So we would get out, go out there and spot and stalk pigs all the time from like 2016 to 2019. Um, yeah, I killed some good pigs and actually killed a, a, it was like, I think he was just shy of like 350 pounds uh wild boar uh one year down there and we spot and stalked it and at, at like five yards and the thing <laughs> had like seven seven inch tusks oh on both God. sides so it was a it was a big boy um but yeah you know it's obviously you know we get we train all day and we get done at like two or three and then you kind of got the afternoon off so either i'm either going pig hunting or or going fishing um yeah. so you know yeah it was a it was a long day and you know, we have, I have this gigantic boar coming in. I, everybody thinks it's like four or 500 pounds. I don't know if it's one that they had caught at one time and snipped it or whatever. So the testosterone on the yeah. thing is just outrageous. Um, I'll have to send you a picture of it. Oh, for sure. <laughs> but uh, I hunted it a few times, but it seemed like it would only come in at like 930 at night. So it was like, I'm like, dang it, man. So... I went and bought one of those like green feeder light things yep. for pig hunting. So, um, yeah, trained all day a few times, and then I would go out at like when it's kind of um, pitch black in the evening or whatever. Yeah, and I I would I think one night I set to like two thirty in the morning, just in the middle of a swamp by myself, with <laughs> just a bow hanging in the tree. Oh, like dude. it was it was like a little like. I've done some dumb stuff, but it was probably like out there for sure. So, but luckily there was a, uh, it used to be an old hunting ground at one time. So there was a couple old ladder stands. So yeah, yeah. I drug an old, old drug an old ladder stand back there with some new ratchet straps and ratchet up. So I was in a tree stand, but it was, it was a little sketchy, but yeah, you know, I just, um, try to hunt every chance I get for something for sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Well, but then the whole, the whole Turkey thing is, you know, uh, actually, I, I've killed turkeys down there in the past. I've, yep. killed, a, I've killed two Osceolas, so um, it's kind of cool. I can say that I killed Osceola. But, oh, 100%. Um, so usually about the time we have to leave Florida to go to North Carolina to train, and that's when season's coming in like that very oh, okay. – maybe two weeks, two weeks later. So, um, But I'm always down there messing with turkeys. You know, there's always dirt roads with some public land on both sides. And, um we went and was training one day on bicycles and I'm like, I could see this like strut marks up and down this road. Like, I'm like, man, that looks like a turkey been strutting there. So I was like, I went back that evening cause you know, we've heard them in the morning training and stuff. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna see if we can hear one job on the evening. And I went there on that road and got there and I was sitting on my bicycle and I hooed out a couple of times and nothing. And I called a couple of times and nothing. And I like just having to look through this opening um, and then there was like a big clear cut, like 400 yards away. And I see this black dot, like way, like 400 yards away. And this, this turkey, I literally made maybe like three or four soft yelps. And this turkey come running from 400 <laughs> yards away. And I'm like watching this thing and it's the thing runs. And I'm like just sitting on my bicycle on this dirt road. And this thing runs like five yards from me. I'm videoing it like, it's crazy. I'm like, man, why can't this be like a week later? Like, <laughs> right. So he was ready. But yeah, I mean, it's them turkeys down there are a different breed than they are up here. Them turkeys down there are pretty, pretty aggressive when it comes to calling. So it's, it's Florida uh, heat. yeah, it's, it's cool to be down there to take, it's cool to be able to experience like hunting down there and then it, and experience hunting up here. So 
it's kind of I get both worlds with it. As long as you're not whitetail hunting down in Florida, your your uh, your level of of um, standard would go down quite a bit. Yeah. I remember uh, yeah. Dan, Dan and Jackie, who we've had on the podcast, they in Tallahassee. I don't remember where they're in Tallahassee or like the Panhandle. Yeah, in the Panhandle, and they're always telling us how the deer. It took them a while to like not shoot fawns up here because yeah. that's kind of what they they had like, to adjust had yeah. to adjust their thing. Yeah. But, like that's another thing, you know, being in West Virginia and then hunting Ohio yeah, is like mountain deer. You know, yeah, like you know, I have all this land in Ohio to hunt, and literally where we live at in West Virginia, we live on a big hill and we overlook the Ohio River in Ohio. And I can literally see one of the farms in Ohio that I'm able to hunt from our house in West Virginia, and it's. Uh, way the crow flies maybe two miles if that and um it's crazy because i can have a deer in ohio on that farm be 140 to 150 and not even really like bad an eye at i guess as bad as it sounds or even think about it but if i had that deer here in west virginia oh, on man. my farm i would be obsessed every day like i'd be doing everything to kill that deer but it's just it's crazy what that buck limit does yeah in west virginia compared to ohio or even that ohio river like separates like it's it's crazy like just having different mindsets for different states that are literally right beside each oh, other Oh, for sure for sure and we're kind of spoiled with it because it's just like that's what we're always obsessed with it's just the central, yeah. central ohio deer so that's like ohio got... has ruined me for hunting west virginia like i've been i've been able yeah. to kill some really good deer in west virginia but it's just like like I, I hate like it sounds bad that I wouldn't even really think about even I'm like, oh there's not he's that deer's probably like one fifty five. He'll be good one next year. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's horrible. But like if I was here in West Virginia and that deer, I would be like I every day <laughs> hunting that deer. Like it'd be way different. It's crazy. That's it. That's cool to hear. Someone's different perspective on mm -hmm. that. Yeah. But obviously, don't get me wrong, like hundred fifty five inch deer, that's a big deer. Yeah. Oh I yeah, just, dude. On Fort like, you know, I hate even saying because, you know, some people would die for a 150 inch deer. And you know, I don't know. I just, I'm lucky enough that some of my yeah. farms have been, I've been able to manage into bigger yeah. deer than that, I guess. Yeah. So. And, and, and our expectations always been, I mean, like I have one like knock on door permission property that's pretty close to the house. And there was a 150 inch deer there, there this year. You've, you've seen some of the videos and stuff, dude. And I was obsessed with this thing. Like every yeah. day I'm out there trying to spot him you know, and, and setting things up. And it's just like, man, but if, if you're managing a, you know, a couple thousand acres of huntable area up here in Ohio, like, and you already got big deer on the wall behind you, like the expectations yeah. are different. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just naturally how that's going to be. Yeah. I mean, and you know, I, I'm fortunate enough to, I guess, be able to pass on deer like that yeah. because I have enough different properties where I can be like, Oh, that I know, this deer is four and a half. So maybe I can give him another year. And I kind of, I know he has a 90% chance of making it. Yeah. So it's just kind of, it's easier for me, I guess I should say. 100%. So. At least in West Virginia, he's got the black bear hunting opportunity too. Mm -hmm. you, ever, you ever try any of that yet? One of our guys went down <laughs> this year. Yeah. I've never, I've never done it, but I've had a few people invite me to come do it. And it's something that I would really enjoy. Yeah. You know, like to do. Um, I know my buddy, he lives over in Elkins and he sends me some pictures of some giant bears up in the mountains. So, um, hopefully one day it's on the bucket list. Oh, I'd yeah. say, I'd say an elk hunt and a bear hunter, my top two, probably oh, bucket list for sure. So, um, we're, uh, Rochelle, uh, that'd be good for Maggie too. Have you heard DSG, <clears throat> like DSG doing something great? Yep. In sportswear? Yeah. So we, we carry their products and obviously it's, it's a line of apparel geared towards females and, um, her and her husband, she said, I think they raised the dog, the, the bear, because they bear hunt with uh, dogs. Yeah, yeah, they raise yeah. dogs, and they're over in Smoke Hole, mm -hmm. like kind of over. Yeah, the I follow them on Instagram. Yeah, doll, yep. she's great. She's great. She's one of the yeah. nicest people I've ever met. Um, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, like they can't like guide, mm -hmm. and I, I use air quotes. They yeah. can't like guide hunts, but like they're like you know we'll have friends over and stuff, and we'll like help them. Yeah, take them. But yeah, yeah so but uh, that's cool. That would be an opportunity for sure, man. They have a pretty cool trout um, yeah. guide yeah. service there too, golden trout. And the fly fishing and stuff. Yeah. 
What's yeah. the what now? What's the one that you again? You had there isn't. Wait, we're stop, we got the Instagram page pulled up here with all your pictures. What's this? Yeah. What's this one right here that you have pulled up? I here? think that's a golden trout. The golden trout or yellow trout, yeah. whatever. I can't remember. That's what they're called. that's from that's from up there in Elkins. Um, you know, uh, growing up, my dad did a lot of trout fishing up there, so he has some pretty good spots that we go up and go up there and fish. And um, yeah, uh, you got your golden trout, your rainbow trout up there, and it's cool to go up there and walk the old railroad system and fish all day long and uh, have some dinner yeah that's awesome when you guys are in florida you ever go after like peacock bass down there um no i've always wanted to but we're a little bit more northern than uh, where the peacock bass yep. are um we've actually joked around about driving down there and fishing some of the canals for them or whatever like down in miami um, or never, something yeah but we've never i've never been down there um but they say they are some hard fighting fish that's mm-hmm. for sure like that's that'd be cool to go do we've talked about it before going down there but i never have so i i think if i caught one i probably have to get like a, a replica mount or it now oh, just yeah. up on the wall 100 percent. crazy colors have you seen them before uh, yeah i'm about yeah. to tell i'm about to tell everyone the story i've told before too i was down there for my anniversary <laughs> in 2021 <laughs> Was it last year? Last year, yeah, it was my tenth anniversary. We went because we went we went the year prior, or we went we went in twenty and in twenty two. Ben's like, gotta catch, gotta go peacock bass, gotta go peacock bass. I had a guy that, um, do you know Brandon Folk from uh, the Far From Stock side of things? They get uh-huh. a, they get a little bit. It's more like truck scene stuff, but he had <laughs> yeah. a he uh, had a, a guy down there that they use. I think it's like it's in uh, Fort Myers Beach, Fort Myers area. And uh, that would have been the ticket, man. Some stripe. Was it the? What's the other one down there? Is it stripers? Uh, no, they no. go after um, uh, redfish and, redfish. Um, and the, the peacock, tarpon, tarpon. Yeah, tarpon. Yeah. And so I had I had all set up, and then I just ended up I just not I didn't do it. I didn't do it. He's yeah. busting, busting my balls about it, man. Yeah. I was like, all right, next time I take you with me on my anniversary trip, then we'll go. <laughs> Yeah, right. it might be a while yeah. man that place is all jacked up right now because of the hurricane stuff that came through last year yeah. but it might be a while before we're back in there i know that they're up and running i know the charter's up and running that was was taken guys but yeah there's a lot of canals and stuff right there you would certainly catch them out there for sure yeah yeah that'd be cool to catch one of them for sure you know another thing that i'd like to try to do and you have the picture again going back to you and jacoby uh bow fishing i think you had like a massive like grass carp or whatever with the bow fishing yep. i'm sure that's got to be a riot uh, you're not probably doing much of that now this year with the wrist cast, but um, yeah. let's talk about the bow fishing a little bit. Yeah, you know, I got into bow fishing uh, quite a few years ago, and uh, man, just kind of obviously we, I live right on the Ohio River, yeah. so um, just kind of got into it and ran with it. And it, it was like another thing that I got obsessed with. I was going every night, and you know, there was some nights I'd be by myself from nine o'clock at night to uh, watch the sunrise, and wow. everyone's like, "Hey, you're crazy," but you know, I. I had found some really big fish and, um, uh, yeah, I ended up killing, uh, a five foot two, 66 pound grass carp a few years ago. Um, it was, un- <laughs> it was, it's crazy. Like five foot two. <laughs> taller than yeah, my wife. It was, <laughs> yeah. It, so it, it was crazy. And, um, yeah, it just kind of, I, the problem was, is like, I got obsessed with shooting big fish and, um, I kind of, I took the fun out of it for my dad cause he used to go with me a lot, but he just would want to shoot fish. But I'm like, I'll oh, just wait. There's going to be a big one. Oh, I'll just wait. Like, yeah. don't mess it up. Don't mess it up. So I kind of, I kind of ruined it for him a little bit. Just trying to shoot all these big fish. And then, um, yeah, kind of got out of it a few years ago and then, um, uh, actually I bought my kayak and, uh, was like, huh, oh, I think I'm going to had saw my bow fishing and boats hanging up in the hunting shed one day. And I was like, I think I'm going to try to kill, uh, uh, go bow fishing in my kayak. So I actually, uh, <laughs> it's like pulling had up. an old coon, old coon light and, uh, went down the river one night and ended up killing quite a few fish out of my kayak and had a really good time. And then I was like, oh man, like maybe I should buy another boat. Well, yeah. then a couple, weeks, a couple weeks later, there's a boat sitting in my driveway and then just kind of got <laughs> back into it. And, um, yeah, got back into it. And now Jacoby went yep. with me one time and, and every day he's like, we, we going boat fish the night? We going boat fish the night? <laughs> I love it. So yeah, he's, and, um, 
it was, it was kind of, I was kind of thinking about selling the boat at one time. And, uh, now that he's into it, I'm like, oh, I can't yeah, sell the boat. Yeah. Like, my wife, my yeah. wife all the time is like, oh, you need to sell that boat. You don't use it. But now with Jacoby, I'm like, he's kind of my excuse. Oh, he likes to go out in it. Like, but no, he, he loves it. He takes like his little toy bow and pretends to shoot him. And, um, yeah, he's, uh, it's cool to see him, I guess, be involved with everything now. Like, um, it started with dirt bikes and now it's being hunting and fishing yeah. and, um, yeah, just trying to trying to raise them right. Oh, dude, yeah, hundred percent, and I can echo that. Like I said, our boys are about the same age, and so yeah. my, my daughter's six. Uh, she'll be seven here this year, and so I'm like, right, I I got the sweet spot there with you, man, and it's so much fun. Like I was telling you, so my wife and I may have mentioned this before, but my wife's uh, grandma watches my my dot my my daughter and my son <laughs> on one of the days during the week, and they took yeah. them out. I don't remember where we were, but she's got a pond. We still mm. got to fish that pond, mm. by the way. She needs some of those blue go taken out, but she's got a pond and then she took the kids back there and they didn't catch anything. They usually never do, but, um, but they still have so much fun. And so Thursday we were, Casey's like, you know, father's day stuff. What do you want to do? Whatever. And I needed some stuff for, um, our grill or our trigger. Yeah. And so I stopped into the store and I was buying some stuff. And I remember you did the video, uh, well, maybe show people on, on YouTube, but you did the video. Was it YouTube? The Mr. Crappie, the kids, oh, kids yeah, fishing, yeah. the kids. Yeah. Kids what to buy kid. for your kid when you're starting yeah. out. Yeah. And Reese was like, man, I want to buy, I need a, he, he kept telling me, I need a bobber. I need a bobber. And I don't even know if he said bobber. I think he was saying something else, but he like, <laughs> he was basically saying, I need a bobber. And yeah. I was like, all right, cool, man. And I was like, looking through, I'm like, oh yeah, Ben did this really sweet <laughs> video about a bobber. Let's go ahead and grab it. Dude, yeah. I, I handed him like a little $3 pack of bobber and he was bobbers and it was like, like two per, per pack. And he, dude, he was like, yeah, I got my bobber. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I just love it, man. It's just so much fun. Yeah. Like we, we catch like a little one pounders, if that, little 11, 12 inches out of our back pond. It's girl scummy. And I had a, a topwater frog. It was the zoom one that you gave me. Mm. Uh, I had the, the EWG hook in it and the fish, it, it choked it. And, uh, you know, I'm having a hard time pulling it out. And, the, and of course it, it yanked the the uh, zoom bait like basically right off the hook was in the zoom bait kind of slid up the line a mm -hmm. little bit so yeah. the, the bait was like roached right like yeah. you're not I, I basically just pulled it right off the line cut it dude he was like dad you need to use this one again you need to use it. i'm like buddy that's yours keep it that's your frog yeah. like you keep it and then, so when we got the top water <laughs> we had the top water and i got it stuck in a tree he was back there with me dude he was just loving it it's just dude, they're they're the yeah. best man there's there's cool, so man. much it's... fun and then like it's crazy because mine is like taking up fishing. Like uh, we watch hours and hours of YouTube. Like yep. yesterday we we're fishing and he's like, I need a GoPro on like, so you can see my fish. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. you're watching too much YouTube, dude. <laughs> like, but it's, it's crazy. Like I, he, he's like full fisherman. Like I put a lizard on a worm and he casts it out and jigs it, reels it. Like it's, He's full into oh, it. I'm man. like, maybe we could make a make a career out of fishing for you. Yeah, dude, that's like, a ticket right there. We got some connections yeah, for okay. sure. Um, if yeah. you're watching YouTube, have, have you checked out uh, Brian's stuff yet? Creek crawler. He he's down there in Athens. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So he's got pretty wholesome content. Even with his last one where he was getting berated a little bit there by the yeah. landowner, he still kept his cool pretty good. Um, but Brian, we have him. He does our um, biweekly bait our bi-weekly bait series with, with Ben and yeah. uh, you know, about some stuff that we have on sale and whatever, but he's got the, what, just one single GoPro typically. Mm -hmm. And yep. he's got some really cool content. So check that yeah. out for sure. He's kayak fishing and, and doing all sorts of stuff down there in Southeast Ohio. And so it'd be kind of local for you and you may even know. Some yeah. Spots. I would check it out. Yeah. He's uh yeah. he's one of our good dudes, man. He's, he's, it's really good, clean content. He sure. fishes the GMR yeah. too, so that's that's not okay, really yeah. super close, but it's a little bit closer to you down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Heck yeah! I have to check it out on YouTube. My kid will. My kid will love it. Any fishing right now, he's obsessed with. <laughs> it's like we're either riding dirt bikes or fishing right now. Like, you yeah, know, it's pretty cool. And that's what I love. Um, I'm sure you've seen like the Deegans, the Deegans YouTube series and stuff, and they they do a really good yeah. job keeping it kind of family oriented and stuff too. And they, I mean, they could easily get a big head and make it a super ego. But Brian keeps him pretty leveled. But uh, Huxon, um, you ever see his yeah, stuff, dude? He's, he's out there big, ripping, and then he's like fishing, so yeah. stoked about catching bass in Florida. Like so yeah. stoked. He's like everywhere they go, they it's gotta go cool. to a fishing shop. Get That's some, cool. Get some bait. 
get a new rod yeah. for his birthday. I'm like, this kid could have literally anything. It's, you know, they're they're millionaires. Like they're the most popular yeah. family in motorsports. And like this kid could do anything he want. He just wants to go out on a little John boat and fish, dude. I freaking love yeah. it. It's pretty cool. It's it's cool raising them right for sure. Do you see? Do you see any uh, any other guys like that are in the motorsports that are into it, kind of like you? Like I'm sure you've probably found other guys that are in the same interest as you outside of racing. Yeah. Like, do you see that a lot? Um, not really. Just mostly like, um, actually a few guys. Mostly see it with Stuart, with yeah. Stu Baylor. Like he's a big outdoorsman. You know, he has property in Missouri that he lets me go and hunt and stuff. And you know, his brother Grant Baylor. Yeah. Um, he's a he's a big time hunter, and you know, his girlfriend um, has killed some big deer in Missouri. And um, there's a few of us that are pretty outdoorsy. And um, but yeah, I know Stu probably has the same passion for yeah, deer yeah. as I probably have outside of racing. So. It's cool, you know. We have a good friendship, and he lets me go. Oh yeah, fester his deer, fester his deer in Missouri yeah. a couple of years ago. I festered a pretty big one out there. So, um, but yeah, there's a few of us. Yeah, but um, Malcolm, yeah, Malcolm it, comes to mind too, like Malcolm. Yeah, on that side with the fishing side. Yeah, like so, I'll show yeah, you this. Oh yeah, yeah. Malcolm, yeah. It's Malcolm Stewart down mm-hmm. there in the uh, Orlando area too. But yeah, so that yeah, I mean, there's there's quite a few people, in it, I think, you know. Um, uh, one that comes to mind is Garrett Marchbanks. He rides yeah, for the yeah. FXR. He just, a, he just had a he just had a heck of a race last weekend. Yeah, big time elk hunter. Oh, really? He, he's from out west. Like, like yeah, he's yeah. a big time hunter. And you know, I've heard stories of uh, Villapoto. Uh, Villapoto's yeah. a big time hunter. He like goes to Alaska and hunts moose, and goes to the, goes west and hunts elk. And um, yeah, I think there's a lot more people than. Than, than yeah. what people probably think yeah oh. what we people think i'd say for sure oh. um you what? know because you know like uh you know i you with i'm trying to see like with the whole racing scene of it, you know we have obviously our big sponsorships like husqvarna and ktm and you know they kind of have a a rep so it's like i think if you're a rider, you kind of have to be down low a little bit. Like that's why I have the separate Instagram yep. or whatever, you know, yep. to kind of have that side of it. And I feel like, you know, a lot of guys can't post what they really want or out, yeah, outdoors. You know. I don't think it, that makes sense. Just you're sitting there with an elk with blood everywhere. I don't think it would really look yeah. good on a, on your main, like, like for your, sure. I guess your sponsorship or whatever. So I feel like, there's a lot more people in the industry that probably are outdoorsy that um, probably don't, a lot of people don't know about for that whole reason, I guess, situation. Oh, so. yeah, I would totally see that. I mean, not everyone can be hardy, right? I'm posting a dead bug yeah. on your Instagram. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, but it yeah. makes sense. Like, if you're racing for a multi billion dollar company and you're like the focal person for that, like an RV, you know, like the, yeah. he's one of the greatest riders ever. And like, he's yeah. not, he's not going to jeopardize something he's got with Yamaha or Cali because he's posting the elk you know like it, yeah. it's just yeah. like you're not going to like you could still love it you know yeah. I, had, I had a similar thing just feel wise not even necessarily that regard but like working in finance before here and like being into hunting it's like i really gotta keep like that separate professionalism now i can just yeah. talk about it all the time so it's but, cool but yeah. it's uh i could definitely see that you know another one that came to mind too is um when we had waddell on i would really i would I don't even know how I'd have this conversation, but RC Carmichael, uh, he, Waddell was telling us that like he helps him with his, his he's got like a Suzuki and Car- and yeah. uh, Ricky helps him with his Suzuki and then Waddell helps him really? with some hunting stuff. Yeah, dude. I, I'll, That's really cool. I, dude, uh, as soon as he told us that, I'm like, no way. Like, you got yeah. you get personal Suzuki motorcycle advice from Ricky Carmichael, the greatest yeah. person that ever sat on a two-wheel bike. And it's like, and you just help them with turkey hunting or whatever. Like, yeah. dude, I love it. I love it, man. That's what it's about for sure. Yeah, that's pretty cool for <laughs> sure. That's wild. Wouldn't it be? You wouldn't think those two, two, those two names would be like affiliated in the same thing. But right. I guess that's right. That's cool. That's I mean, how it works for I, sure. I don't know if I, I don't know if I, I mean, I, I don't think I've ever told you, but so our first Supercross race was um, Indy last year. I took my boy with us and, um, Somehow, some way, we ended up with Feld. We ended up getting up in the suite, uh, like just visitation for a suite. And um, yeah, 
we were coming back down to our seats before the main event started and uh Bill Poto was waiting like we were sitting at the elevator to go down and uh Bill and Poto just like walked up from me to Ben like right beside me and my buddy Jordan Skinner yeah. my, he turned around and I'm just sitting there with my son like you know we're just waiting for the elevator no big deal and my, he goes he like gives me like the head nod like bro like look beside you and I was like yeah. holy shit I was like dude no way <laughs> so my very first yeah. supercross race ever I got to meet one of the best people to ever get on a bike That's cool. and I'm like dude and we're about the same age and so like yeah. it's like we could totally connect and he was just like super down to earth and chill yeah. and uh once we got off the elevator he was like doing the hey I got a phone call like I'm that way I don't have yeah. to talk to all these people in the main concourse but it's like yeah. Oh, Ryan Villapoto, man, he's a dude. He's legit. He's so like, it would be Ryan Villapoto. Yeah, Ben's like, I don't even know who that is. <laughs> I don't even know who that is. He's a cool dude. He's a cool dude. Him and yeah. uh, Ricky do a podcast together about okay. uh, about dirt bikes and stuff. And uh, he's a multi time champion. He's 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 he's, yeah. he's a legit dude. Um, I've heard Carmichael, but I guess probably who hasn't, you know? Yeah, that's like, a he's, big yeah. name. Carmichael is like the Tom Brady of motocross. Yeah. So it's like <clears> I don't know, Carmichael or McGrath. Who you who you picking first? Two different things. Carmichael. Yeah, or okay, now Stu. Throw Stu in the mix. Carmichael. Yep, Carmichael's the goat. Stu Stu yeah. uh we talked about Malcolm. I told you James James Stewart is uh and we'll get back into honeymoon here in a second, but um he's probably the fastest man ever on the bike. Like Stewart's probably the fastest dude that's ever been on a on a dirt bike. Yeah. I mean you can't argue that. And then McGrath is like the king when it comes to supercross. It was, it was like fifty some was no, it was like 70, 70 something. Like 70, 70, 72, I think. 70, maybe? Yeah, 72 wins. It's a lot. That's a lot. A lot, a lot. Sure. Over an entire career. And then, um, you know, Ricky's just the greatest at doing it all. So, yeah. um, but getting back into hunting, we'll, we'll switch back to that. But kind of a segue do you find yourself, someone over here in our customer service team wanted me to ask this as well. Her brother sent a question in. Um, Katie, I don't remember Katie's last name. Katie, if you're listening, shout out. I can't remember your last name. I apologize. Her brother races GNCC and actually was at a race. She was telling me that you were helping her dad like navigate a hill last weekend. If that, that's, yeah, if that rings about the local race. Yeah, yeah. If, that, if that rings about, I can't remember her last yeah. name. I'm sorry, Katie. Um, but uh, do you do you think that hunting and racing um, GNCC do you like? Does that help you like spending a lot of time in the woods? Does that help you like kind of see the lines and stuff too with hunting or? Vice versa, oh, like, does hunting help you with the racing? Yeah. Um, it's weird because kind of, yeah, because you, you're, I guess, acclimated to being mm-hmm. outdoors in the woods and you see things different than what probably a normal person yeah. would see or something like that. Um, I can kind of see that a little bit, yeah. Just um, I don't even know how to explain yeah. it really, but I, I, I can see that for you're sure. You're in, like, familiar country, right? Like, it's not foreign yeah. to you, right? Like, you can – yeah. I mean, you're probably Which, not telling the difference between a white oak and a red oak at 30 miles an hour on a bike, but, you know, but yeah, still. But it, it's funny because I, a couple of years ago, um, actually the question was, was like back in my natural habitat looking for deer scrapes. And it was yeah. me, a picture of me running down uh, the edge of a cornfield and like the end of October on a, like during a race. And it was like, there was a tree branch hanging down. And I remember oh, dude. Uh, under a couple of them, there was like big buck scrapes and I'm going like 40 mile an hour. And I'm like, <laughs> it was funny. Cause I like put a caption was like back in my natural habitat, looking for buck scrapes or something like that. So <laughs> it's funny. Cause like there's been races where I'm like, Oh damn, that was a nice tree stand or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, that was a big, that was a, that was a big buck rub. Like so it's ripping by you. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's weird. But like, it's just how, how it is, I guess. I don't know. Like it's cool. So yeah. But, <laughs> 40 miles an hour. Yeah, that's find crazy. A, find a buck screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it. So love it. it's funny. Like it's pretty, it's, it's a pretty cool picture. Like it's like corn's like kind of faded and it's just like, like a place where a big buck scrape would be like it's pretty funny that's sweet man that's sweet but what? it's like this thing and those things during racing i'm like what i'm like oh okay yeah, well right. then like at the rate at the race last weekend uh or sunday i went and watched or whatever and a guy had it was a it was a nice millennium stand and i'm like it kind of had a nice ladder up to it and i remember I was like, oh, it's got a rope up in there. I remember I climbed up in it and was sitting in some random dude's stand, like looking at it and like looking at his shoot windows and stuff. I'm like, this is kind of weird. I'm, 
Like, if it was during hunting season, I'd be pissed if somebody was sitting in my tree stand stinking it up. But I'm like, ah, it's it's still early. We're good. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but, you're fine. You're fine. Yeah, as you're watching that, everyone but, drive through. Yeah. But, no, it's cool because it kind of – both worlds collide a little bit for sure. That's awesome. What has – uh what has been, I guess, going back to like the hunting and fishing stuff, what have been some of the most memorable things that you've, that you've done? I mean, obviously you have some giant deer on your wall back there. Um, you know, all the memories that you, the fishing side and the hunting side, what have been some of the most memorable things that you've done so far? Um, obviously with Jacoby now, I mean, there's been some pretty, mem- like some pretty awesome things, but I'd say, you know, I've been fortunate enough to kill some really big deer, but I'd say that probably the coolest one is, is my wife killing her, 150 like just how it happened and what we got to experience and um you know it was she grew up as a city slicker and then you know we kind of met and you know now she's in this world where i have like 13 deer hanging on the wall staring at her all the time yeah um but no she she jumped into it and was really into it and um she's a avid bow hunter she don't really like the gun side of it but sure. she's she really likes she really enjoys the bow hunt and um it was a couple of years ago and she's like ah, i think i want to try to kill a, a, a big buck this year i'm like okay like uh, i'm into it like let's do it and um i had one picture of this deer like back in maybe the beginning of october and he was a really just a huge mainframe eight i mean he's 148 inch uh eight point and uh I had a couple of deer in there that were probably like 130s, and I was like, "Oh, we can go in there. You can hunt one or whatever." And I remember it was like November 7th. I hadn't even shot a deer yet, and I, I she's lucky I didn't have my bow because I would have <laughs> shot this deer. <laughs> so um, it was like, I don't know, like you, you hear stories of November or you watch stuff on YouTube of sure. November 6th or 7th, and it was like one of those things you dream of november 7th i mean this buck came in buck roaring mountain of doe just like the the perfect experience for her just to be there to witness that and even for me like it was mind-blowing like yeah. just how it unfolded like the buck down there just roaring and um yeah and even to i filmed the whole thing so to even film it was like awesome and a cool experience we'll have that for the rest of our lives and um yeah they you know, he come in roaring at 15 yards and she smoked the thing. And, um, I yeah, that. I mean, that was probably, probably one of the most memorable things for me, I think being in an outdoor is just being there witnessing her with that, like seeing her face and just like, did I get it? And just, it was, it was honestly like, even if it was me, it would still be a, a, a memorable hunt, just how it ha- happened and how the buck came in and stuff like that. I just, I remember hearing the buck, like you hear people talk about buck roars and that was like the first one I actually ever got to experience. And it like, when I first heard it the first couple of times, he was kind of down in the holler and it like made the hair stand on bone back oh, of my dude. neck. I mean, it was just like something like, like hopefully, you know, if you're avid outdoors and like, it's something you can experience one day, like just hearing the roar and stuff. So, um, yeah, for her to kill that deer and, and film in and everything and be there with her like that that was that's something i'll never forget and like even though we have it on film and um yeah it's it's crazy like i don't think i don't think everything anything will ever top that like it was a cool experience and um yeah i mean another thing was even though i didn't get to kill the deer i'll probably never have another deer on it on camera like it again but um a guy ended up killing it, it was like it was 214 inch deer like it's a giant deer i called him double d there's some pictures of him on my hunting page and stuff and uh i think he was like 27 scoreable points but um yeah man just um got the farm late in the year one year put up the camera uh, got some pictures of him he had two probably six or seven inch drops on each side um probably like maybe 170 inch deer 165 um hunted a few times uh didn't get him fast forward to the next year i spent everything on this deer like i mean i did it i was doing stuff in the rain i was wearing rubber gloves i was like just i was obsessed with this deer all summer long and 
um, had pictures. The very first pictures I got of him that year was like June 17th. And he was already like 160 inch deer. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, like this deer is going to be incredible. Um, watch the deer grow, um, into a 214 inch deer. Um, he, uh, disappeared like three days before season, um, hunted this deer 41 days. For, I hunted deer 41 days, um, and this is and this property is in the middle of nowhere. No cell phone service, nothing. So I'm in the stand 41 days. Uh, 11. I'm, I remember this to a fact. 11 days were all day sits. Um, hunted the deer, obsessed with the deer. Never had a picture of him. Um, yeah, hunted him all them days, and then turned around like January 3rd. I'm in Florida. A guy calls me. My buddy's like, hey you you were literally hunting a ghost so i'm like what do you mean he's like that guy killed that deer the first day of season so i was literally oh man hunt, hunting a deer all those days and he wasn't even alive so um it's enough to make you I mean, that'd be pretty that that's a pretty miracle hunt like i don't know just um it's just almost better if he didn't tell you <laughs> i know like um yeah so uh, it's, those two things are probably the most memorable things i've had hunting wise yeah um, even though I mean, I didn't kill the deer. Just having a deer of that caliber to even hunt Try, is, yeah. is, yeah, it's crazy. So, um, yeah, you know, I've been able to kill uh, these two deer the last two years, 171-inch uh, deer and 170-inch deer. Like, to kill two booners back-to-back, like, that's pretty cool. But, um, yeah, the wife's hunt was probably probably the coolest for sure. You, got, you made sure to give her a special spot on the wall, though, didn't you? Yeah, she's she's got it right up there in front of the TV. So. Perfect. There you go. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, I've been fortunate enough to kill some really big deer. I got a seven point, like 148 inches at seven point. Um, that was that's a pretty cool story, you know. Um, was hunting that year. Actually, it, it's funny because I had a cast on this wrist that year, um, that fall, and. Uh, my buddy called me. He's like, Hey man, I just seen a giant deer. Um, told me where it was at. I'm like, there ain't no way. Like literally on the edge of a really busy County road, um, cornfield. And literally, um, I had it mapped. It's like a, a acre and a half woods. That's it. There's nothing else around it. Um, so I was like, man, like how am I even going to hunt this deer? Hunt started hunting in a ground blind. Um, but literally I was fit, looking at, uh, 10 yard strip like that was it so it's pretty boring so um end up finding this tree uh by the time i got up and then i was like eye level with the county road like so um the neighbor wasn't too pumped i was hunting the deer so every time he would drive by beep oh, give me geez. the finger yell out the window um end up uh killing this deer like pretty cool story just um the deer was bedded in that acre woods every day and just happened to be there at the right time at the right place and That's awesome. um, ki- killed him on my birthday. So that was pretty cool. Oh, heck yeah. Um, yes. I mean, I've been, yeah, been fortunate enough to kill some really good deer and uh, yeah, just, I think with the whole racing side of it, I'm able to be outdoors all the time, you yeah. know, um, get done training and stuff. I'm checking cameras, uh, you know, um, this time of year I'm running minerals, everything. So it's, it's all, it's like a full-time job really for deer hunting. I, I feel like, and even turkey hunting, you know, I mean, it's, uh, every chance I get, you know, I, I'm turkey hunting, deer hunting, fishing. And, um, yeah, just, I love to be outdoors. Um, my wife hates it that I'm gone so much because yeah. I'm gone racing and then I'm gone outdoors, hunting. But yeah. Yeah, for sure. But, um, no, it's, it's cool. And, you know, now, especially with Jacoby getting in there, I'm sure, uh, sure we'll be, uh, hunting together a bunch. So yeah, it's, it's, cool. only, it's only going to get better, man. It's only going to get better because yeah, now you sure. can basically, you know, what we were talking about dads reliving their glory days with their kids, right? Now you yeah. get to relive it all over again with the <laughs> yeah. hunting side, dude. It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be sure. great. It's going to be great. Yeah. And all it's right. cool to see how like into hunting he is. Like it, it's like he, he's into it. And, um, you know, like obviously some kids are kind of like, oh, I don't know, but yeah. like, Dude, he's 100% in, like, had to buy him a bow for Christmas, and, um, 
yeah, it's yeah. it's cool. I'm excited. I'm excited to live that out with him for sure. Awesome. I can't wait to. I'm going to have to build a, if he has the same luck he does with fishing now, I'm going to have to do my, start my own tax service. Yeah. <laughs> we got a guy for that. You got a guy. And here's what you do. So you go up and see our guy, Toby Burdett on your way to fat, on your way to, uh, route 62. You'll take Jacoby yep. up there, do some indoor, go ahead and drop off your, your mount right there in yeah. Utica on the way up. You'll be, you'll be set, man. Yeah. Stop by the shop yeah. and buy some stuff on the sh- by, over here in Hebron. Yeah. We'll fish Buckeye Lake. It'll be great. Yeah. Be it great. was funny because the other day, um, I was loading my kayak up with all my stuff. And he's like, where are you going? I'm like, I'm going to go fishing in the morning. And he was mad that I was not taking him up there. Like he <laughs> cried everything. He was pretty upset. Like. I was like, buddy, I don't know if it'd be a good idea to go up there with you or not. So, um, yeah, if I don't take him, he gets he gets pretty upset. I love it, dude. I love it so much. I, yeah. yeah, I only only a dad really understands, man. It's just it's it's the best. So. Yeah. Well, sweet man, we've been going on for a little while now. Did you have any more that you want to add? I don't. I want to get him back to his uh, nice boring afternoon of looking at trail <laughs> camera pictures and putting mineral out yeah. while we're sitting here at work. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm excited, man. Well, we'll, uh, I'm glad to have this relationship, you know, uh, yeah, again, man. um, shout out to Jordan for hooking this up because, um, he, he knew that we were doing this and he knew that I was getting into it and, and, um, and hooked us up and it's been cool to, to kind of watch you in the motocross and then see how passionate you are with the outdoors. It just makes it that much sweeter for me to, to kind of have two things yeah. to talk about with somebody. And, uh, Next time you're in uh, AEP, man, I'm about 45 minutes away. I'm just uh, east of yeah. Zanesville, uh, there in Perry County. So uh, I'll be happy to come out and we'll 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 throw a couple of baits in or cast some bait in the water for yeah. sure, yeah. man. So for sure, awesome. I've been up at the shop a, a few times. I've stopped in there a few times. So okay, I have to stop back in and see. You yeah, as you sure, keep so. buying all the stuff for Jacoby and you buy yourself a new Hobie kayak, and we'll we'll yeah. we'll be there for you, buddy. We'll be there. <laughs> I'm I'm about to about to stop in there and buy me the new Phase Four. So there you go. Yeah. Well, you see what I'm wearing yeah. today. So yeah. come check it out, man. We got we got several. Yeah. We got several. For sure. Well, that man, Sounds good, man. Again, thank you for uh, for coming on today. I knew it was going to be great, and you know, you, yeah. you did just that. So we look forward. Good luck healing up. I look forward to seeing you on some doing some success there with Gas Gas, and uh, best of luck moving forward, buddy. Yeah, thank you very much. All right, everyone, that is all we have for you today. We really hope you enjoyed that conversation with Thad. You know, it's really fun for us to introduce you to some great people who, while they have other interests or professions, they really just enjoy being outside hunting and fishing like the rest of us. As always, we appreciate you listening. Have a great 4th of July. And until next time, enjoy the pursuit.